Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. We're live on the Detroit Fireboat, the captain of the Detroit Fireboat. He was the captain of the Detroit Bobolo Boat. What caused this fire? What's happening with it right now? And the captain's memories next. There's always a risk to meet someone you started talking to online, but Warren police accuse this trio of an elaborate plot. We'll tell you what they were up to. All right, Priya, but we begin with breaking news we're following in Monroe County. One man is dead, several others hospitalized after a rollover crash involving a van. We know two people are in critical condition with nine people in all sent to the hospital. Really frantic scene as first responders were trying to help group home members out of their overturned van. Happened on Telegraph near Heist Road in Frenchtown Township and Rod Maloney standing by there live. Rod, uh, let's talk more about what caused the crash. Well, it, it sounds like a, a badly timed left hand turn, Devin. I'll show you. There is the van over here. It's on the pickup truck, but it was knocked on its side. And that left one of the group home members who had been to a Calder Dairy day trip dead. The other uh, eight people in the van have been transported to the hospital. We're told what happened was the van was coming out of Hero Heights, going left onto Telegraph, when there was a Matco truck coming up Telegraph northbound. And the eyewitnesses say that the Matco truck didn't have a chance that the van pulled out in front of him, and that's what caused the accident. Police are still investigating. But Cynthia Guerin was one of the first on the scene. The van was sitting here at the stop sign, and and uh, I I knew he was going ahead and turning, and the next thing is we heard the big crash. Sky 4 was there for the hectic and frightening scene. On the ground, Rick Dye saw the accident and immediately joined about 20 other people trying to help. They were all trapped. They had used Jaws life to get them all out, so um, there was really nothing we could have did. Well, they were all trapped. As heartbreaking as this accident was, Michigan State Police Lieutenant Tony Cueva says frightened, battered, and bleeding group home members from Taylor became still more frantic as rescuers realized the trapped passengers rode wheelchairs that were strewn around the vehicle. Emergency personnel not only had to try to extricate the passengers, but then you had some that were not mobile and you had to get them out um, through other means, through doors, through windows, etc. Two staffers were in the van along with the driver and six passengers. The Matco truck driver ended up more than a thousand yards away in a field. Eyewitnesses say he was awake and talking, but he was taken to the hospital. One man, a 60-year-old group home member, died at the scene. A life flight chopper took one person to Beaumont Trenton Hospital. The rest took ground transportation to other hospitals. Two remain critical. The rest we aren't certain about. The crash left Rick die truly shaken. Yeah, it's not the place I want to be today seeing this. Hopefully everybody else is all right. So you can see that they're getting ready to clear the scene here. This closure here at Heis and Telegraph has caused a significant traffic jam in the area that will uh, soon abate as they get the scene cleared. But 10 families have been impacted by this uh, greatly, and uh, certainly there will be many more stories to tell as a result. Back to you. Uh, Rod, when we spoke to you last, we were still kind of in the middle of some of the patient transfers here. We got any updates on, on the injured passengers now? They're still having difficulty, Devin, getting a hold of the next of kin oh. to these people, finding out which hospital they're in they're having difficulty with as well. We do know that one of the past and one of the people in the van who was ground transported to the hospital here uh, in Monroe ended up getting life flighted to Toledo for level one trauma care. And uh, we'll still be waiting to hear on that person's condition. I'll be staying on it. All right, Rod. New tonight, three people are accused of using the social media app Snapchat to target victims in the Warren area. Priya Mann joins us live with the elaborate scheme that involved a 19-year-old woman, her boyfriend, and another man. Priya. And Kim, police say their MO was the same every time. Men were lured using this Snapchat photo and a few weeks worth of conversation. They would agree to meet in a residential area. And when they did meet up, the girl would tell them she wants to smoke pot, but in her vehicle. And when men got in the car, when those victims got in the car, well, they quickly realized they weren't alone. It's really scary, though. I mean, it's a block away from where we live. Neighbors near Mound and East 8 Mile were shocked to learn of an armed robbery on their quiet street. Oh, I saw a bunch of police officers pass that stop sign on the other side of the road, and they had a person in a red shirt, and they, they handcuffed him. 
Warren police say several men in their 20s were robbed at gunpoint in an elaborate scheme. Police say 19 year old Sarah Rolls would become friends with the victims via Snapchat. Eventually, they would agree to meet in person and smoke some pot. But they weren't alone. Sarah's boyfriend, Croswick Jackson, and his friend, Finzi Jones, would show up a short time later with guns. You're using, uh, you know, somebody's photographs as bait. Sometimes guys don't think uh, smart when they see pictures of people that they've never met online and they're willing to meet them not in a public area. Warren police say the trio confessed to three armed robberies all in residential areas including this apartment complex near Hoover and Common. In one case the victim showed up with his friends and they were all robbed. They didn't do anything wrong. They shouldn't be meeting strangers online to smoke marijuana or anything else or even have coffee or whatever. But then again, they didn't, I mean, they didn't ask for it. Now, the string of armed robberies just lasted a couple of days, but in total, six people were robbed. And the trio now facing life in prison, five counts of armed robbery, which has a sentence of life in prison. The two men also facing an additional five counts each of felony firearm. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya. A piece of Detroit history went up in flames this afternoon on the Detroit River. One of the old Boblo boats, the SS St. Clair, caught fire, believed to be a total loss. Sean Lay is live on the Detroit River. He's been following the story this afternoon. And Sean, investigators believe a welding mishap was to blame for this. Unfortunately, arson investigators say yes, a welding mishap caused the fire here on the Boblo boat. We want to look, we're here on the Detroit fire boat, and I can show you what's happening right now. A hot spot here, very hot, just won't go out. Crews here from the Detroit Fire Boat have been pouring water on that very spot for about two hours. It's still burning inside. But while we have this up close look for everyone here, we want to give you a look. It's going to bring back memories. Let's give you a look right here of the first level of the Bobolo boat. That is where there was a snack bar, you'll remember in there. Second level, the dance floor burned through. It's destroyed all the way back to the smokestack of the steamer. Top level there, beer garden and bar. That's how big this fire was. It is gone. So many people coming here to the riverfront to watch the Bobolo boat burn and really a sad day for so many. Yeah, that's sad. Sad to see it go. As the Bobolo boat burned, Kevin and Cindy Duda from Wyandotte came to take some photos and came to say goodbye to the Bobolo and relive some good times. Just how sad it is. It was sad when they closed it too, though. Just taking the kids and going going to Bablo, or like I was telling her when I was um, young, my grandparents would be in Wyandotte Hospital watching it go down the river. And it was just, yeah, fun times. The couple made so many memories to taking the steamer SS St. Clair to day trips to the amusement destination Bablo Island. But it was their time on the way back to Detroit on this very boat that they will never forget. In fact, Kevin, Stopped by this past spring to snap this photo of the Boblo. He's sad to take photos of it this way today. Their fondest memories of the Boblo? Dancing on there when we were small and just going to Boblo, cruising down the river, going there and, and coming back. They'd be dancing on there, playing different songs and looking down and seeing the, the motors running inside because you could look down and you could see the, the machinery and everything. So many memories burning here on the Detroit River today. Take a look at your screen. The man leaning against the pier right there, that's Captain Ken Horner. He's the captain of the Detroit Fire Department fire boat, but he also was the captain of the Buffalo boat. He started out on this boat as a deckhand. He came to Detroit looking for a job. He got it on the Buffalo boat, worked his way all the way up to captain. As a deckhand, though, he met someone on the boat very special. I uh, met my wife right here. She was a souvenir girl right here on this boat here. What happened? How did you meet her? I was a deckhand. She was a souvenir girl. She lived in Melvindale, and next thing you know, well, we were married. How many stories like that have you heard? But you've now had the Detroit Fire Captain, previous captain of the Bobolo boat way back when, meeting his wife there, a souvenir girl. They raised two kids together and also he was like a rock star because he was the pilot of this boat and later than the fire boat. Much more from Captain Horner. We'll put the entire interview we just did with him here 
on the boat on clickondetroit.com. You can watch it also much more yeah. with the captain coming up at 11 o'clock. But a lot of memories, just like the captain's, tough day for him as well. Back yeah, to you. No doubt. A remarkable coincidence there. Keep sharing your memories with us on our Local 4 Facebook page. All right, Sean? It's probably surreal for him. Oh, you could no just doubt. see it in his eyes, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, the relief from the heat is finally here. And Andrew in for Ben tonight. Andrew, what a way to start the weekend, right? Oh, you got that right. And it continues into the weekend. Maybe some higher temperatures, but still dry out there. Much drier, less humid than the past few days. <laughs> More than a few days. Try five or seven. 79 degrees right now over at Metro Airport. 79 also for our friends over in Adrian. A little cooler or a lot cooler, if you will, to our north by the tune of about 10 degrees or more. While it's 79 here, it's upper 60s for our friends in Port Huron. 68 degrees, but with skies like this, nothing but blue skies, loads of sunshine out there and temperatures in the 70s. Look at this, the heat index, if you want to call it that, the same or even slightly lower than the actual temperature. What a change a cold front makes, right? Looking good and feeling good as we look at downtown Detroit. 79 degrees over at Metro, wind at around 14 miles per hour. Over the next few hours, temperatures slide into the middle 70s by 9, 10 o'clock this evening. Even 60s out there by 9, 10 o'clock. It gets cooler overnight. Don't need to use the air conditioning. But will we see the same weather for tomorrow? You bet we will. But how much warmer or hotter will it get this weekend or over the next seven days? We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Andrew, many of us love summer, but so do annoying pests that can attack your trees, leaving them nibbled, naked, and near death. Residents in Ann Arbor are fighting a big outbreak of gypsy moths. Some call it the worst in 20 years. Paula Tutman takes a look at how humans and Mother Nature can fight back. I need to warn you, the thing about watching this story is it's probably going to make you itch. And you know what rhymes with itch, right? Ick. There are more and more of those egg masses. Yeah. The circle of life is playing out in Bob Gavin's Ann Arbor yard. Well, like, oh, look at all the butterflies. So, Yay. Here, so here's oh, not the, so much. Yeah. Gypsy moths are at an all time high. Two fairly dry summers have boosted the population. This is actually a female laying her eggs. The males get excited and dance around frantically. They defoliate the trees in the process and they poop. If you come out at night, you have to wear a hat and you definitely don't look up and it's like rain. The important thing is to know that this is cyclical in Michigan, and if you keep the base of the tree healthy. The trees that are healthy can be defoliated and will reflush and put out a new set of leaves and there won't be any consequences next year. You also need to know what to look for as Mother Nature actually corrects herself. When the gypsy moth population gets too dense, nature sends out a natural fungus and a virus. And so caterpillars hanging upside down like these need to be left alone on the tree so that other moths contract the fungus. Caterpillars twisted into a V also need to be left alone. But keeping those um, dead caterpillars around will help to increase the virus and the fungus um, for the next year's population. The technique I have been using is I pull off the female gypsy moth and these, there's the egg mass. One egg mass can be between 600 and 1,000 potential caterpillars. And while these gypsy moths can spread to other communities, it's part of nature. Little you can do to stop them, even less to get rid of them. The key is keeping the trees healthy in spite of them. Paula Tutman, Local 4. We have a staff entomologist. That was amazing right? stuff, wasn't it? You never knew. All right, Paula. <laughs> uh, it's always a spirit of debate. Milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dr. Frank McGeorge will join us with uh, which one is actually better for you when it comes to health. Coming up first, the public corruption scandal has now reached Oakland County. What we know about the charges this former city manager now faces when we come back.